Good evening and welcome to Grace Lutheran Church as we mark this Monday in Holy Week with the seven last words of Christ set by Franz Joseph Haydn. Tonight, we all give thanks for the, the presence of the Contras Quartet whose musicianship and friendship are such blessings to the Grace community. We give thanks to uh, Dr. Jill Poliath Baumgartner for selecting the poems and for inviting gifted readers to read them for us this evening. On this night, we who have ears to hear listen to our Lord Jesus Christ, whose words from the cross bring us together. In these words of Christ and in Haydn's musical meditations, we are given a new vision of what power and glory look like. Up to and in his dying breath, we hear from Jesus words of forgiveness and promise, comfort and hope. This one truly is the Son of God. In him everything is finished. In him our salvation is finally and fully accomplished. May we who meditate upon the last words of Jesus find our faith renewed tonight and throughout this holy week. Hear these words of grace from your Savior, for they are for you from the true and merciful King. Look to his cross from which flows life, abundant and eternal.
Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive. Malcolm Kite. Father, forgive, and so forgiveness flows, flows from the very wound our hatred makes, flows through the taunts, the curses, and the blows, flows through our wasted world, a healing spring, welling and cleansing, washing all the marks away, the scores and scars of every wrong. Forgiveness flows to where we need it most, right in the pit and smithy of our sin, just where the dreadful nails are driven in, just where our woundedness has done its worst. We know your cry of pain should be a curse, yet turn to you and find we have been blessed. We know not what we do, but heaven knows. For every sin on earth, forgiveness flows.
Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Luke 23, Jorge Luis Borges. Gentile or Jew, or simply a man whose face has been lost in time, we shall not save the silent letters of his name from oblivion. What could he know of forgiveness, a thief, whom Judea nailed to a cross. For us, those days are lost. During his last undertaking, death by crucifixion, he learned from the taunts of the crowd that the man who was dying beside him was God. And blindly he said, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And from the terrible cross, the unimaginable voice, which one day will judge us all, promised him paradise. Nothing more was said between them before the end came, but history will not let the memory of their last afternoon die. Oh, friends, the innocence of this friend of Jesus, that simplicity which made him from the disgrace of punishment ask for and be granted paradise was what drove him time and again to sin and bloody crime.
Woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. Relationship by Ruth Padel. That time he was sleepy as the moon, and she carried him three hours to the priest. The chip of Kingfisher King Lapis she tied around his wrist to turn away the evil eye, where did that go? He was shy in the playground, afraid of heights, of fire at night. Yesterdays glisten like photos melting together in the rain. Prints of small feet in wet sand, his first step without holding her hand, keeping him quiet in siesta, mending clothes through those long mother afternoons you think will never end. The first glint of a tooth, first pair of shoes, whose days were those? Blink and they're gone. Is he most her son, not back then, but now? when he disowns her and gives her to his friend. She used to listen as if everything he said was truth, would turn to gold. But these words come to her like rubble at ends of the earth. Does he think he's looking after her? She's been dismissed. He's done, it seems, with relationship like a lover breaking a bond, as if bond did not exist. Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I wake and feel the fell of dark, Gerard Manley Hopkins. I wake and feel the fell of dark, not day. What hours, oh, what black hours we have spent this night. What sights you, heart, saw, ways you went. And more must, and yet longer lights delay. With witness, I speak this, but where I say hours, I mean years, mean life, and my lament is cries countless, cries like dead letters sent to dearest him that lives, alas, away. I am gall, I am heartburn, God's most deep decree, bitter would have me taste. My taste was me, bones built in me, flesh filled, blood brimmed the curse. Self yeast of spirit, a dull dough sours. I see the lost are like this, and their scourge to be as I am mine their sweating selves, but worse. Thank you. 
I am thirsty. Poem after the seven last words. Mark Strand. To be thirsty. To say, I thirst. To close one's eyes and see the giant world that is born each time the eyes are closed. To see one's death. To see the darkening clouds as the tragic cloth of a day of mourning. To be the one mourned. To open the dictionary of the beyond and discover what one suspected, that the only word in it is nothing. To try to open one's eyes but not be able to. To feel the mouth burn to feel the sudden presence of what, again and again, was not said, to translate it and have it remain unsaid, to know at last that nothing is more real than nothing.
It is finished. The Face, Richard Jones. <coughs> Emmett Till's mother, speaking over the radio. She tells in a comforting voice what it was like to touch her dead boy's face, how she lingered and traced the broken jaw, the crushed eyes, the face that badly beaten, disfigured, before confirming his identity. And then she compares his face to the face of Jesus, dying on the cross. This mother says no, she'd not recognize her Lord, for he was beaten far, far worse than the son she loved with all her heart. For she said she could still discern her son's curved earlobe, but the face of Christ was beaten to death by the whole world.
Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Jesus dies on the cross by Malcolm Guite. The dark nails pierce him and the sky turns black. We watch him as he labors to draw breath. He takes our breath away to give it back, return it to its birth through his slow death. We hear him struggle, breathing through the pain, who once breathed out his spirit on the deep, who formed us when he mixed the dust with rain and drew us into consciousness from sleep. His spirit and his life he breathes in all, mantles his world and his one atmosphere. And now he comes to breathe beneath the pall of our pollutions, draw our injured air to cleanse it and renew. His final breath breathes and bears us through the gates of death.
the earthquake. On the strange apparitions at Christ's death by Henry Coleman. What strange, unusual prodigy is here? The height of day, and yet no sun appear? Nothing but darkness to be seen? What fright hath caused the day thus to be turned to night? Sure, the old chaos, or the day of doom, heaven and earth's fabric to dissolve is come. For so graves open, and in every street the dead are seen to stand upon their feet. Nor is the temple safe, its veil and sunder is rent by a prodigious clap of thunder, and all disordered is. God's son is dead. No marvel then, the sun doth hide its head. Black death hath seized upon the God of light. Tis equal then day morn and sable night. Nor is it fit the grave should peopled be with dead when earth receives eternity. The temple's veil must rent in pieces be, lest there be that there should want a winding sheet for thee. Nor is it a wonder that all things do lie disordered and are sick when God can die. <laughs>